To start with, I want to make sure you understand what Kubernetes is all about and why we even need it. So what is Kubernetes? Well, as described on their website, kubernetes.io, it's an open source system for automating deployment, scaling and managing of containerized applications. Let's investigate. The word Kubernetes comes from the Greek language and it means captain of the ship. And that's why many of the symbols in the Kubernetes ecosystem also refer to uh, shipping items. Uh, probably because it's all about carrying containers, so container ship, right? That's what Kubernetes is about. Kubernetes is currently owned by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, or CNCF. CNCF is an open source foundation within the Linux Foundation, and that's good. Linux Foundation has a long experience dealing with open source software and making sure it remains open. And uh, the fact that CNCF is the owner of Kubernetes uh, makes that Kubernetes is probably going to be available for everyone uh, forever. Kubernetes is not just software. It's not even a product. It's an ecosystem. It's providing a core solution with many third-party add-ons, which are uh, provided by approved projects focusing on different areas. Uh, good to know for CKAD, CKAD is focusing on the core solution, not so much on the ecosystem. So at the moment that ecosystem comes in, uh, as for instance, when you need to talk about ingress, there are multiple options. Uh, that's outside of the scope of CKAD. CNCF wanted to provide a Kubernetes certification that doesn't uh, make any preference for items from the ecosystem. It's just about the core solution. So what do we find in the ecosystem? Well, solutions for networking, solutions for ingress, for monitoring, for packaging, uh, and so much more. Now let's try to understand the nature of Kubernetes. Kubernetes implements a platform to run container-based applications in a cloud-native computing environment. And that is so different from running applications on a server. In a cloud-native computing environment, you need uh, to store your information in cloud. And that's exactly uh, what uh, Kubernetes is doing. And that is special because the application does not have a direct relation to any server. So as a result, all that is needed by the application needs to be stored in the cloud. And to successfully run your applications in a cloud-native computing environment, specific properties must be provided. And that's what Kubernetes is all about. Kubernetes is offering Kubernetes resources to provide for these properties. And these resources are defined in the Kubernetes APIs, all of which we are going to investigate uh, much more in the next couple of videos. Now, how about Kubernetes competition? Uh, that is easy to understand. Kubernetes is open source, and as such, it's available to everyone and any company. And the open source nature of Kubernetes allows companies to use a very strong common code base and focus on features uh, that the specific company wants to add to that code base. And for that reason, there is no real serious or significant Kubernetes uh, competition. There are Kubernetes distributions. We will talk about Kubernetes distributions in the next lesson. The only thing that needs to be mentioned here is Docker Swarm, which was created by Docker Inc. Uh, as a solution to orchestrate containers. But because of Kubernetes, it has become uh, pretty much insignificant. Now, how about these distributions? Well, there's vanilla Kubernetes. Vanilla Kubernetes is Kubernetes directly created from source code hosted by CNCF. Many people are using vanilla Kubernetes. But there is also Kubernetes distributions. And these distributions are adding specific functionality and a selection of solutions from the ecosystem. Uh, like Google Anthos and Red Hat OpenShift and SUSE Rancher and Canonical Kubernetes. Uh, so there are more distributions available. It doesn't matter too much because they all go back to the same open source software. Now, before we continue, there's one more thing that you need to really understand about Kubernetes. There is a new release every three months. Uh, and when a new release is published, new versions of the APIs may become available and old features may get deprecated. And if a feature is deprecated, you should immediately adopt the new method, as the feature will go away within the next two releases. 
Hey, one more thing about the release cycle. You are watching a recorded video course. What are we doing to make sure you have the most up-to-date information? Well, first, I will always make sure that the information in the GitHub repository reflects uh, the most recent changes uh, in the software. And every time it is really necessary, we just record a new version of this video course. Uh, so you will get new versions every now and then. We try to follow along with the dynamics of Kubernetes in this video course.